Welcome brothers and sisters. In a previous video, we talked about how to set up this deplating tank to remove the silver from this silver plated item. What accumulates on the bottom of the tank will depend on what you use for your electrolyte. For my solution, I'm using salt and vinegar, and we've added a little bit of hydrochloric acid. What accumulates at the bottom of the tank should be primarily copper and silver, with the remaining base metals being separated out. So what we have in here should just be silver and copper but there could be some polymers, there could be some additives, there could also be some binders in here. Um, so we do need to take a further step before we just go ahead and melt this up. If you do just go ahead and melt this up, you will recover your silver and copper, but you're not really maximizing your yield. So I'll show you a couple different ways to process this material to get pure silver or pure copper. And so what we're really checking for in this experiment is if I don't do anything to the solution that comes out of the slimes on the bottom of the fish tank and I just go straight to acid, what kind of results are we going to get? So I'm going to use hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. I'm going to set this one aside for now and we'll start with this one. So to this, I'm just going to pour in some sulfuric acid. And I'm just going to heat this on low and we'll start to dissolve the copper in here and the silver should fall out to the bottom. After a while I'll turn the heat up just a little bit. So here we are about one hour into boiling with sulfuric acid and it's not quite a boil, um, it's more of a kind of a rolling heat. And one thing to keep in mind with sulf hot sulfuric acid is incredibly dangerous, so absolutely use uh, all of the precautions. We're going to go ahead and give this a stir. I'm going to test to see if water in this solution has any reaction. There is a slight reaction. So again, be careful using water to rinse any of this solution. So we're about two hours in with the sulfuric acid boil, and I'm gonna let that run about another half hour. And while I do, I'm gonna start to filter just the solution that actually just came out of the bottom of the deplating tank. Again, I'm just gonna use doubled up coffee filters. I've filtered all of the slimes from the bottom of the depleting tank and I've dried this out over some low heat. And what I recommend, no matter how you go about melting uh, your slimes from this, whether you go sulfuric acid, in here is hydrochloric acid. The silver and the copper can be in different oxidation states. And so when you go to melt this material, you're going to want to use a flux. Now I'm going to use a flux that's pretty common for this reaction, which is a 50% sodium carbonate or soda ash and 50% borax. 
the total amount of flux should be equal to the total amount of metal. So if there's 100 grams of metal in this dish and we want to add flux to that, we're going to go 50 grams of borax, 50 grams of soda ash, mix that all together real well, and go ahead and heat it up. Now here, one of the reasons why I really do prefer using sulfuric acid uh, in this step, all of the copper goes into solution. The copper will dissolve into the sulfuric acid, leaving behind silver. Now you'll see there's kind of a white line in here, and this is kind of why I like sulfuric, because there's an indication, a visual indication in sulfuric acid. If you stir this and you let it settle uh, you know, over a little bit of time, typically the metals will sort out somewhat uh, by densities, and so you'll be able to see if you have contaminants in here. Now I can tell that that's a mainly black powder so that should be a combination of silver metal and silver oxide. The white layer that's in there is most likely uh, the titanium that came off of the first experiment uh, when we used the titanium rack to rest our silver plated items on. Here you could take a good look at the silver that's left. Now this I just took a pinch, maybe a, a tablespoon of this material here and dissolved it in hydrochloric acid, adding a little bit of heat. And now we have copper chloride in the solution and our silver is still a solid in the bottom of the beaker. So let's mix up our flux and we'll go ahead and melt this up first. You want the finest particles you can have, so I'll probably mash these up a little bit with a uh, mortar and pestle. I'm also going to go ahead and start filtering this sulfuric solution and dry out the solids that are in the bottom of the speaker. The hydrochloric solution was just a successful test to show that you can remove all of the copper or vast majority of it. This I'll just throw into my hydrochloric bucket for processing. So I've loaded up an ounce of material into a melt dish and I've used this melt dish a couple of times only to melt pure copper. And I don't usually do such a small melt, but for this test, we really want to see how our flux and our metal comes out so we can test this in the XRF. So I'll gently heat all of the material in the dish, and as the material turns red, I'll slowly turn up the gas.
Okay, so in here we have our silver sulfate, and this came from the slimes uh, from the depleting tank, and we dissolved them in sulfuric acid. So we end up with silver sulfate and copper sulfate. And now to get our copper back, um, there's a couple things you can do. If you just want copper sulfate, you can evaporate this solution and you'll get your copper sulfate crystals rehydrate those um, and they can be used back in the cell. I'm gonna just get my pure copper back. So after you're done filtering, we'll just take your leftover copper sulfate and put it into a beaker. And you can use either a copper coil um, or what I'm using here is the stainless steel cathode from the Four Horsemen kit and uh, then I'm using an iridium uh, anode and I'm running here I got 3.98 volts at 5.35 amps at 21 watts so actually this will heat up a little bit which is fine that causes some evaporation and we're driving some of the water out what we'll end up with here is we'll get our pure copper back at the cathode and this solution will totally clear up and we'll end up with all of our sulfuric acid back. So now we're gonna go ahead and melt up this uh, silver sulfate and we're gonna use that same recipe, soda ash and borax as a flux to make the conversion from silver sulfate back to silver metal. If you try and melt this as it is, it will convert to silver oxide, uh, but it won't convert fully to silver metal without adding a flux. It's important to keep in mind that there's a molten reaction taking place inside of the melt dish. The silver sulfate first converts into silver oxide. It's reduced back into silver metal. Smelting metal like this definitely takes longer in the melt dish and requires a little bit higher heat because of the quantity of flux that's in with the metals. Given that it's about a 50-50 ratio of flux to metal, as everything heats up, the flux will work its way to the top of the melt dish, while all of the metals will work their way to the bottom. So if you time it just right, before all of the metal is completely liquid, you can pour off the flux, return your melt dish to the flame, and finish melting the metal with a little bit less flux which gives you a lot more control during the melt. So here we have our copper and silver button that came from the slimes at the bottom of the depleting tank. And here we have our silver button that we refined with sulfuric acid. Now both of these buttons had a little bit of flux on them, so I did clean them off a little bit. And the silver button I did run with some dilute sulfuric acid 
and some heat for a little while to try and remove the majority of the flux. But the best way to get a good result in the XRF is to flatten these out and then test them. You can either put them through the roller or So the results are in and they're not what I expected. By using the sulfuric acid to refine the slimes from the fish tank, I actually only achieved a 40% uh, silver to copper ratio. I've achieved as high as 80% uh, doing this process in the past. So by looking back and putting this video together, I realized the three and a half hours that I used to uh, boil in sulfuric acid was insufficient. I also probably rushed the rinsing stage as well. So I'm gonna increase that to a 24 hour boil in sulfuric acid. And uh, I'll obviously do a little better job with my rinsing next time. And you can expect to uh, see results quite a bit higher than this, at least 75 to 80% uh, silver and then 15 to 20% copper, which makes it perfect food for the Four Horsemen system. And so I'm definitely going to stick with the sulfuric acid at this step. Now, some might ask, why not just use nitric acid there? Because of the chemicals that we use in our deplating solution, hydrochloric acid and vinegar, you produce a lot of chlorides and also complex structures. And nitric acid doesn't like to play nice with chlorides. I've attempted using nitric acid a few times and I haven't had much luck. So if you have any information, please leave me some notes down below. I still believe that sulfuric acid is the best step at this point in the process and I think you could even achieve possibly a hundred percent purity if you boiled it in the sulfuric acid long enough and rinsed it incredibly well but either way you're probably going to want to run electrolysis anyway because that is the best way to get 3.9 silver so thank you very much for watching and may all your days be blessed